get to know all of you a little bit better. Uh, as Tom said, uh, he's not only one of my first endorsements, he was the first uh, uh, person to endorse because he talked me into this. Uh, you know, I did get drafted to do this, and I have to tell you, it was a very, very difficult decision. I've been running for a year and a half, uh, put a lot of uh, time and effort running for lieutenant governor, uh, but uh, we're at a crossroads in this state. We are in a situation where the Democrats have made no secret of their plans to try to pick up not only two-thirds in the Senate, but to try to pick up two-thirds of both houses. Now, we lost three seats in the uh, Assembly this last election cycle. And in the Senate, uh, I've held my seat uh, for the last eight years. Uh, they tried to beat me and spend millions against me in my re-elect. Uh, they tried to recall me over a year ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, we need to have strong, principled leadership in Sacramento. So, uh, for me, I, I can't emphasize enough how difficult of a decision this was. We prayed on it. Uh, my wife and I had some very long discussions, but to see our state go to a, a situation where not only have we seen huge record deficits, uh, huge tax increases, but the threat of that going much, much deeper, the threat of losing the two-thirds in, in either or both houses, not only has me nervous, but for the first time, you know, really has me scared for my kids. I want my kids to be Californians. I want to change our education system. I want to make sure that our state is one of those states that, that values public safety and that we have a place that we can raise our kids. So uh, I am uh, now running for the assembly uh, in a seat that uh, is a heavily Republican seat. That'll be something new for me. I've been somebody who's uh, represented a seat that the Democrats have tried to take me out uh, for many years now. This is a seat that they said a Republican couldn't win. They certainly said a conservative Republican couldn't hold a seat. But I've got to tell you, as we've uh, traveled throughout my district and throughout many of these counties, the Democrats in these areas don't want their taxes raised any more than Republicans do. That's why in a seat that's barely over 30% registration, we won by 76% of the vote in that recall election. We need to get our message out to Democrats and independents. We're at a crossroads right now. We're not only seeing record deficits, but we're seeing the, the largest unemployment that this state has seen in generations. So we, in, in areas of our state, uh, in my district, for example, we not only have the highest foreclosure rate in the state, but the highest foreclosure rate in the nation. We have a water crisis that's driving our agriculture companies out of business. A loss of jobs, that's phenomenal. And many of our companies are now deciding to move to other states because that's what they have to do to stay in business. I uh, was just down this morning at Hillmar Cheese. Uh, the largest cheese manufacturer in the world now has now opened their second facility in Texas. They're no longer expanding in California. As many companies have decided not to expand in California, many are expanding in other states and others are leaving the state. We've got to change that around. We've got to reduce the regulation in this state. We have to get our fiscal house in order. We have to put some teeth into our constitution so that we not only have on-time budgets, but we stop continuously transferring these record deficits year over year. We have to balance our budget. So I'm looking forward to going to the assembly not only to carry on the things that I've worked on, selling off a lot of properties around the state, getting our fiscal house in order, but in defending seats and now traveling the state to pick up seats. We're at a crossroads in this state, a state where it's going to get a lot worse, where we have the opportunity to change registration, to pick up seats, and make the state a lot better. So I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time today uh, uh, giving a long speech. I certainly wanted to get up here and ask for your support. Not only in running for the assembly, I hope to be running unopposed. Uh, we've been up a, a great amount of support uh, throughout the entire district. But more important, for the future of our state, getting involved in change registration, talking to your neighbors, and getting people involved in voting for the first time. We've got to bring this state back, and it's going to happen neighbor to neighbor, door to door, making sure that we've got leaders in every community getting out there to drive out the vote. So uh, I look forward to working with all of you. Uh, certainly I'm willing to answer any questions. This is a big decision. Uh, it caught us by surprise. I'm sure it catches many of you sort of by surprise as it did when Tom's announcement running for uh, the Senate. So happy to answer any questions you might have for me. And if there are no
real quick. I, I still farm uh, today. I grow almonds, and uh, I've got the agriculture's leading plastic container company, both of which I started myself, and uh, I, I think play a lot in a lot of my political decisions. Uh, you know, my first days in the, in the Senate, uh, it was the workers' comp fight, and uh, as we talked about workers' comp, there was a lot of different discussions on how it was going to affect it, the different changes that were going to be made. I walk in every day with my workers' comp statement and say, here's my bond rate, here's how this is changing, talking about a lot of things that were very unfamiliar to other members of the Senate at the time. We've got to have not only strong leadership, but people that understand you know, how to create an employment in the state, how to create jobs, how to keep jobs here, and how to make a Yes, sir. What would be your approach to the water problem of the Berkeley Canal and getting water down to the North Santa Barbara? I think we have to have both a short-term and a long-term approach. Uh, there was, uh, while we took this water debate to a historic level uh, with the debates that we had this year, uh, we still don't have a guarantee on sites and temperance flat. Uh, we still have a bond that is an $11 million bond with a lot of, a lot of different pieces of legislation in that bond that will do nothing to create one more drop of water or store one more drop of water. We have a bond that should have been three billion that's now ballooned up to eleven that still does not address the current situation of water to our farms in the Central Valley this year. So while we saw a huge crisis last year, all of the trees pulled up along Highway 5, um, we're going to see on the east side of the valley now a lot more because they're going to be stuck with a 5% uh, allocation of water. 95% of their water will be gone. So we have to have a new scenario. Uh, the two gates project is something that I can support. Uh, it's something the state needs to show some leadership in as well, uh, rather than just saying that it's the federal government. We have to get some water uh, for our farming community. What's your position on repeal of 1832? You know, I, I would like to see 1832 repealed. Uh, I think that it's certainly uh, uh, majority of, of the policies in there are not based on science, uh, but I do believe that if it's going to stay, and this governor's shown no, uh, he's not back away from the issue at all, that we ought to at least be able to get some science and some real fiscal responsible policies in there. Uh, for example, biomass. We have biomass facilities uh, in many areas of the state, but yet even though it's getting rid of our problem of, of trash uh, into our landfills, and it's clean energy, it's still not considered green enough for 1832. Uh, nuclear, while France uh, and many other countries continue to make huge advances in nuclear energy, we still don't consider that green enough here in, in California. So I think we're gonna have to see some changes to that, otherwise it will continue to not only drive business out of the state, but it really creates uh, California as, as a competitive state uh, with other states in the nation. Is there any solution other than bankruptcy in the state of California to reduce the entitlement over the years that it owed the, uh, the budget in California? You know, I think we're going to have some tough decisions this year. We're going to need uh, some strong leadership, and we're going to need all of you to uh, hold your legislators' feet to the fire. I mean, we, we will have a more difficult year this next year than we had last year. Uh, we had some difficult decisions with some of the cuts that were made. We've got to get in there and make sure that the cuts that are made this next year are responsible. That, you know, while we, um, you know, everything you've heard last February was this disaster that was going to happen, the devastation in services that we were going to see, uh, the amount of cuts and the employees that we were going to lose in the state. We went out and hired 15,000 new employees after that budget was signed. We can't afford it. Uh, while every other company in the state is downsizing, you've got your state government that continues to grow. We can't afford it. And we're going to have to address the pension situation in the next couple of years because that will be in the next crisis of bankruptcy the state. Well, there's no further questions. I'd just like to thank you again for the opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, Captain Dunnell, many of you as I've traveled uh, throughout the state. It's really been a blast when it comes to uh, 
our, our state leaders in this one one. Uh, Dave Cogdell was absolutely wonderful. Uh, Tom Berry Hill was carrying on that tradition. Uh, Dave Cox is, is just absolutely spectacular. And Jeff Denham will, uh, will be right up there with him. Uh, I just want you to know the State Sheriff's Association has in the past awarded Jeff Denham legislator of the year uh, for supporting law enforcement issues in the state of California. And from that uh, aspect, it's, it's going to be fantastic. Um, I promise this would be really short. <clears throat> I want you to know I'm, I'm spending almost all my time on the jail project. You, uh, you folks in Citizens of Calaveras County were uh, unbelievably generous for the back in the past major day. Uh, we started a process. We've been going to uh, talk to groups and number 50 people down to two people. And uh, we're going to continue doing that. We think we have an absolute obligation. We may do a commitment what we wanted to do with that money. Um, so any community groups, any organizations uh, who would like to hear uh, how that project's going, we'd be more than happy to show up and talk to them about that. Um, the jail project, uh, we've hit a couple little roadblocks. Um, I've got a meeting at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Hopefully we're going to get some of that resolved. Um, the other thing we're... Uh, working on is uh, a communications project. And I know that we all hate Port Barrel spending in Washington, D.C. But as soon as Mr. Obama signs this on this bill that this went through, uh, through the efforts of uh, Congressman Lundgren and Senator Feinstein in Calaveras County to pick up about $1.65 million for a communications project that we're doing. That's going to be very, very helpful to bring in Calaveras County's law enforcement communications into this century. So uh, we have had some successes in some areas. Uh, the area that we're really terrified about is the, uh, the upcoming budget. Uh, the new CAO was promising that we were going to get started on that in January. Uh, it's going to be terrible. Uh, but I don't know. We'll just have to see where, where we land after that. So we're going to win. I don't Everybody in the government center as far as I know was down to people. There was nothing left but people. And uh, so we have to decide it's going to be it's going to be people we know, people we like, people we work with. And, uh, and that's going to be unfortunate, but I don't see another big source of money coming to show that uh, I promise you we will continue looking. Uh, we're looking under every rock for money, having a lot of success finding money, but not for people. Uh, we can buy Equipment, toys, all kinds of things. There's one of the hiring team that's just almost non existent. So, in any case, if anybody uh, wants to talk about the jail project, want me to come to the room, please give us a call. Thank you.